everybody and thanks for stopping by. This is Rob Riker, your instructor and mentor. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at what are private VLANs. First and foremost, we're gonna take a quick uh, look at the schedule of this video. We're gonna take a look at normal VLANs and operations. Then we're gonna take a look at private VLANs and their operations and finally wrap up with a quick illustration of exactly how private VLANs work. We won't be doing any configuration in this video. This is just for theory. Now normally VLANs, what they do is they allow communication with all endpoints within that VLAN. So for example would be, we have this little small switch infrastructure. We have three devices connected to a common switch all in the same VLAN. So guess what? They all can communicate with one another. And that's the whole point. A VLAN equals a subnet equals a broadcast domain. So as long as you have that logic down and everybody can talk to everybody else, you're in good shape. Now private VLANs are a little bit different. Private VLANs are a way of segmenting traffic throughout the network, also referred to commonly as hierarchical VLANs. So there is a primary VLAN, which is also a normal VLAN, and this logic allows the communication with the rest of the network. If you did not have this in place, traffic with inside of the private VLAN infrastructure would not be able to communicate with the rest of the physical infrastructure that you have deployed. Now there are two different types of secondary VLANs. There's the isolated ports or the isolated VLAN and you place ports inside of that VLAN just like you normally would with any other VLAN to keep traffic separated from other isolated ports. This is a one-to-one -one mapping. And you'll see what this looks like here in just a moment when I illustrate this. The community port or the community VLAN, you place ports in that VLAN as well, are allowed to communicate with each other just like a normal VLAN is. But they are not allowed to communicate with isolated ports. Each of the secondary VLANs can communicate with the primary VLAN. The secondary VLANs use the promiscuous port to send and receive traffic from other parts of the network. Now the promiscuous port, when, when you're using this, think of this as a, uh, a port or a, a communication method that is able to talk with either the isolated or the community. It's able to talk to both. There is a mapping down between the primary and the secondary VLANs. So the when you go to configure this, you go underneath the primary VLAN and you say mapping to uh, the specific secondary VLANs. You can have several secondary VLANs if you would choose to do so. The mapping can be either applied to a trunk link or to an SBI. I prefer using SBIs because then I can limit down uh, at the SBI level, I can limit the actual transport being used instead of just allowing IP communication, I can break it down to TCP, UDP, ICMP, so on and so forth. Now private VLANs are usually deployed into militarized zones or DMZs where you are going to allow external sources to be able to reach internal resources. Okay, so these are going to be devices that are sitting inside of your network that are publicly facing that you're going to allow access to, but you want to add a level of hierarchy to prevent traffic from actually reaching these devices or that will be able to reach the device, however, won't be able to move laterally where you don't want them to. Now let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how this comes into play. So we have a switch and we have some isolated ports, right? So we created an isolated VLAN, we defined it as such, we gave it a number, and then we placed two hosts inside of that specific VLAN. What's gonna end up happening is traffic between those ports will not be able to communicate with one another. However, if those devices need to talk outside of the network, they are allowed to do that. And the way that they do that is with the promiscuous port, and you'll see that here in just a moment. Now you have community ports as well. The community ports are allowed to talk to each other, and they can also talk with the outside world. And the outside world is reachable via the promiscuous port. Pretty simple, not very much, very not, pretty much not very complicated at all when you really start diving into what they actually, how they work. So as a quick recap, we took a look at normal VLANs and operations, we took a look at private VLANs and operations, and we took a look at a quick peek of how that all comes together. Until next time guys, thanks so much for stopping by and take it easy until next time. Jacob Hess here. Thank you guys for viewing the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you that if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, be sure to check out our Career Blueprint and Engineer Training Program at www.zerotoengineer.com.